Hey there, welcome back to Time Before Space, a channel where we explore fascinating physics concepts through engaging interviews, videos, and shorts. You know, as physicists, we sometimes like to view the world through the lens of constraints and bounds. Today, we will uncover some of these limitations of nature. Trust me, these limits are so elaborately woven into the fabric of the universe that it is impossible to avoid them. So let's dive in and try to understand these bounds. Our first physical bound brings us to the bizarre world of tiny objects like electrons, protons, atom, etc. and the weird rules that govern them. You guessed it right, I'm talking about quantum mechanics. In the world of quantum mechanics, physical properties of objects, like the energy of an object, can have only specific values which are integral multiples of some specific fundamental unit called a quantum. This means that physical properties can't just take on any value. They have to be certain multiples of this fundamental unit which cannot be divided further. If you're not familiar with this concept, don't worry, I'll break it down for you. Imagine you're dicing up some mangoes into sizable cubes, aiming to create a delicious dessert. However, just when you think that you can make these mango cubes even smaller, along comes the physicist Max Planck, disrupting your plans. He tells you that there is a limit to how tiny those mango cubes can get. To pick a number, he tells you that you can't go dicing up the mangoes into smaller cubes smaller than one centimeter. Isn't that frustrating? and weird. Well, that's precisely how Planck's constant sets a bound to the smallest possible energy packet, just like your mangoes. We talked about the small, let's talk about the large. We are now entering the realm of stars above. Yes, physics puts a limit even on massive objects like stars. This is called the Chandrasekhar limit named after the remarkable astrophysicist Subramanyam Chandrasekhar. This limit establishes a maximum mass that a stable white dwarf star can have, which is roughly 1.4 times the mass of our sun. Let us try to unpack this. We know black holes, neutron stars, supernovae exist. We now even have images of black holes confirming this. Watch this. So you would agree with me if I say that you cannot keep on adding mass to an object without limit. You would agree that more the mass, more its gravity. So at one point in this process of adding mass to that object, its gravity will become so enormous that the object would collapse on itself. This is the crux of Chandrasekhar limit. Once a white dwarf star surpasses this limit, the inevitable happens. The star undergoes a catastrophic collapse leading to a breathtaking explosion known as a supernova. What remains behind after that explosion is either a neutron star or a black hole, depending on the mass left behind. Moving on, we encounter the universal speed limit. Of all the limits in physics, the speed of light has become the most famous limit. You might recall this famous face from history, Albert Einstein. According to his theory of special relativity, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. At first glance, it may seem like an engineering challenge to overcome. You might think, we just need faster rockets, or there would be groundbreaking technologies in future which would allow us to surpass this limit. The truth, however, is a little disheartening. While it might appear tempting to break this barrier of the speed of light, physics even in principle, stops us from doing that. This is because light has the same speed in all reference frames. Even if you travel faster in a faster rocket, light will still have the same speed in your reference frame and hence you will never be able to surpass it. The speed of light is a fundamental unit that profoundly influences our comprehension of space-time and it imposes constraints on the speed at which matter and information can travel through the universe. Cause precedes its effect. Someone throws a ball at you and you catch it. 
This is a concept so innate that we often take it for granted. But have you ever thought of catching a ball before it is even thrown? Even the question sounds absurd, doesn't it? This is because of another bound of physics known as causality. While some physicists would disagree with me for calling causality as a bound, I believe causality stands as a fundamental bound on the laws of physics, enforcing the correct order of cause and effect. A closely related topic is the arrow of time, which takes us from the past to the future and never in the opposite direction, except for sci-fi movies and books. The principles of arrow of time and causality found their support in the law of physics, the law known as the second law of thermodynamics, which loosely states that matter and energy tend to maximize their entropy over time. This increase in entropy aligns with the arrow of time, creating a clear direction from a past of low entropy to a future with high entropy. The bounds of causality and the arrow of time shape our understanding of the universe's evolution, evolving the universe from a past to a future. There's one another fascinating bound to explore. It's called the Bekenstein bound. This bound seems to be of more importance in this century than ever. We live in the information age and this is a bound on the information. Proposed by Jacob Bekenstein, this bound links the amount of information that can be stored in a region and the region's surface area. It establishes an upper limit to the storage capacity of a physical system, highlighting the interplay between information on one hand and space on the other. So in simple terms, if you store more information than prescribed by the Bekenstein bound, you end up making the system of information a black hole. This is because black holes saturate this Bekenstein bound. And that concludes our exploration of some of the incredible bounds in physics. From Planck's constant to Bekenstein bound, these concepts provide us profound insights into the structure and the limitations of our universe. Thank you for joining on this captivating journey. I hope you enjoyed the video on the boundaries and limitations that shape the fabric of our reality. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell button for more similar content. Also let me know in your comments which other limitations of nature surprise or excite you. Until next time, signing off, your host Madhur. Keep exploring and stay curious.